Kia ora na, and welcome to another episode of Fala Talks. On this week's episode, we're here at the Surgery Studios, owned by legendary audio engineer Lee Preble, and we're catching up with Israel Star. We're here in Wellington, Newton, so let's see how it goes. Israel Star, thank you very much for being on the follow with us today. No, thank you, bro. Thank you. Tell me about the space that we're in, because it's very unique, old, old and day looking. Yeah, well, this is the um, Surgery Studio. This is one of the best, if not the best, uh, studio. You know, um, all the big bands come and record here um, because the bro Lee Preble, he knows his stuff, but he's also got all the old school gear as well. So, yeah, Surgery Studio, make sure to check it out if... Um, if you're into recording, <laughs> come and see Lee, and he'll be really humble. Then you see all his his trophies on the wall. Man, you see them? There's like ten plus up there. <laughs> all right, humble fella, man. It's cool. Thank you. Uh, it's very it's very nice to have you. Uh, for the people that aren't very aware of uh, who you are, what you do, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, so just a reggae singer, producer. Uh, I'm Māori and uh, Rarotongan. Yeah, grew up in Auckland actually, born in Ponsonby, uh, living down in Wellies now, so um, the musical cultural capital. Um, so yeah, just grinding hard, making heaps of good positive music. And uh, your fam- you've got a bit of uh, history with music though, you, your family's big on music. Yeah, well I was brought up in um, 12 tribes um, up in Auckland. Um, the 12 Tribes House, which is uh, full of musicians. You know, I grew up watching people like um, Shay, um, obviously his dad, um, you know, House of Shem, Herbs, um, and my dad as well, the Mighty Asterix. Um, you know, he's been around since, um, oh, you know, for a long time, and now he's uh, full time with um, Salmonella Dub traveling the world. Um, yeah, so music's uh, been around since day one. Yeah, and what is it about uh, music growing up that captured you to make you that made you want to do it? Like I've always loved music, you know, it was ingrained in me since day one. So um, I couldn't try to, you know, avoid it if I wanted to. It was just in my blood. Um, but I remember one time, um, I must have been about thirteen years old, and um, and my dad he he played a Johnny Osborne song. He's an old reggae singer, um, and he played a record of his. But he sung along to it, and when he sung the song, it just hit me like something just hit me about it. The way he sung it, it's like. The only thing I can put it is like when you're in church and um, and you know the choir singing and then that solo goes off and that somebody just goes for it at church and you just feel it. That was the first time and and from then I was like, man, I, I love this. I got to do this music thing. I got to sing as well. So um, it was the message with the feeling behind it that really got me into music. That's it's like the music in your blood feel. Yeah, well, I, I can't explain it. It's just yeah. you know, <laughs> so like yeah. yeah. When you talk about inspirations, people that might have ins- inspired you, the, the sound that you make now, uh, who would you say those people would be? Um, I mean, I take inspiration from from a lot of things. Um, I love old school funk, um, obviously 80s, 90s, R&B as well. Um, but in terms of reggae, um, I love all the old school stuff too, um, and new school stuff, but um, you know, people obviously like Bob. Um, then we've got people like um, Dennis Brown, Freddie McGregor, Gregory Isaacs, um, Steel Pulse um, and all the all the legends, all the legends. So uh, I just try to make something that's authentic, um, but at the same time um, new and refreshing. You got this yeah. little trademark sound, but or, or, <laughs> or, or something. Uh, well, what is that? Um, that's from like the nineteen eighties, seventies, actually. And back in the days, because um, uh, you know, hip hop um, comes from reggae, mm. and what what happened back in the days is. Um, reggae they started taking um, all their instruments out of the instrumentals of it and they would just leave the drum and bass so what would happen is people would start toasting over it um, which is now called rapping Um, they'll just do little rhymes here and there but a lot of the times um, they wouldn't have much words to say because they weren't you know that good of emceeing in the late 70s early 80s back then so they'll just do little scattings and um, that's where Badibli Dung Stung Stung Ban Dung Dung came about yeah. um, and then it just progressed from there obviously um, but then you've got like cats like um, I'm sure you've all, all heard that song um, Pass the Dutchie to the left yeah. hand side and you know it's on there and that kind of popularised it um, but there's a whole bunch of um, other legends like Uroy um, 
Yellow Man and all these other people that um, that popularized it before that came out. And I grew up on all of that, so it was just an original thing to me. I didn't know, like my dad's always done it, um, and I've always kind of done it as well. So, um, and when I did it on a track, um, they loved it, and then that's when I got the call from Sons. I said, mm. "Oh, we, 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 want, we want that on our yeah. tracks." So, oh, okay, sweet ass. So yeah. yeah, that's where it comes from. It's what is it that uh, that we can expect from you coming next? Um, well, I've got the album um, hopefully releasing later on in the year, um, but I've got the um, I've got the label as well, Bless Up Music, and um, I've got a whole bunch of artists on that. So we're looking at uh, releasing Chad Chambers' album on the label, um, and then we've got Al Forty's album, Just Quietly, um, and then Magic as well. Um, yeah, so those are the three albums we're looking at dropping this year. Um, but for myself personally, I've got heaps of collaborations coming up. We've got a big one coming soon. I can't reveal it yet, but this one, um, uh, this one's going to be a, a big one. It's got some big names on it, um, and it's a really good track too. So I'm, I'm sure he's going to going to love that one. Uh, Israel, thank you very much for being on the follow with us today. Uh, but before we leave, is there any advice uh, that you could give to someone watching right now? Um, I mean, gee, I'm still kind of fresh in the game, so I'm I'm still seeking advice from other people. But if I could give anything out um, to kind of young aspiring artists, I think um, what well, what I've seen a lot so far in the game is um, a lot of a lot of artists, and that they kind of, they could slowly lose the passion for it. And um, once you go up the ladder, you know, money starts getting involved, and then a travel a, a schedule um, is quite tolling on the mind and body. But if you try and stick to why you first got into music, and for a lot of people it was, um, you know, sitting in the garage um, with a friend and a guitar, and that's why they love music. That's, you know, for a lot of rappers, it was about being in a cypher um, for hours on end. So I think if you if you can stay close to your roots and to why you got into music, um, it'll constantly refresh you throughout as you move up the ladder. Um, so yeah, stick to your roots and stick to what you really loved um, doing and don't ever lose that. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do anyway. That's what someone told me. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. No, thank you, bro. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Woohoo!